I am so happy to welcome you all back to City Skylines 2, where we are building the realistic North American city of Riverview. We've come a long way already and Riverview really feels like a city with an identity now. And much of that is due to the massive progress we made last time. With our expansions to downtown through our first introduction of skyscrapers, a full revamp of the port of Riverview and the development of its cargo train infrastructure, and of course the city's row house lined inner city neighborhoods and big sprawling single family suburbs. But honestly, I'm even more excited about this new installment as we'll be advancing all the way to the large city milestone, which among other things will unlock high density office zoning and additionally gone out of 30 minute video restrictions. Now, reaching the large city milestone is going to really transform Riverview as we'll have to massively expand the city to even be able to reach this level, uh, basically transforming the city from this to this. And if you enjoy my content, hit the like button and consider subscribing if you don't want to miss out on any future uploads. Nearly 90% of my viewers aren't subscribed, so maybe you've just forgotten to. Thanks in advance. Oh yeah, and a quick disclaimer, I'm still using an early access build, so things may be subject to change. Alright, so let's just start out by assessing where Riverview is at. So things are actually looking quite alright, because we've got uh, quite a bit of demand, so we can start zoning and expanding the city. We've got uh, a, a, a positive population trend, and we've got a positive, you know, cash inflow. So... If it was realistic, I'd probably just start zoning because as long as people are moving in and tax revenue is coming in, then things are fine. <laughs> but I guess it would be a little more fun to actually try and improve the city. And in City Skylines 2, we've got some pretty nice uh, ways of easily checking what impacts are the happiness of our citizens in a positive and a negative way. We can click uh, on each district to get an overview and see what kind of factors uh, add and detract from this. Uh, but we can also check citywide and citywide. The overall happiness is content and not happy. And we can see that uh, the reason for this is that we've got unreliable mail service, which makes sense because we don't have any, you know, postal service in the city. We've got unreliable healthcare coverage and we've got high crime. Uh, and then there's a bit about taxes, but that's not as bad. The issue is, I guess, that the three things here that we'll need to improve, mail service, healthcare, and uh, policing, are quite expensive. So even though we are turning a profit, uh, my very, very first uh, action today is going to be increasing this profit. Now we can get an easy overview of our expenses by opening the economy tab, going to services. Um, I could of course adjust my taxation, but I find that this is a pretty okay level, so I don't want to be overly reliant on uh, lots of taxes. I'd rather uh, make my services and my expenses here a little more efficient. And there are some that are very expensive, such as healthcare, which I guess makes sense, but we're also paying a ton of money uh, to import electricity because if you guys remember we don't really produce our own electricity here in Riverview we are deeply dependent on importing from our neighboring cities uh, and we pay 154,000 uh, for this import so that's gonna be my first thing fixing this I'm really happy with the fact that in City Skylines 2, we've got so many options for producing uh, electricity and utility options as well. And for our situation in particular, something that's a, a massive, you know, natural feature of this map is that we've got rivers that uh, have lots of current, like really strong currents. So the natural thing for us would be to explore some hydroelectric power generation. So we'll need to unlock the dams, but I'm pretty sure we can actually do that because I've got 16 development points stored up that I haven't used yet. So if we jump into electricity, uh, let's see, we've got hydroelectric power plants down here. We'll have to unlock the emergency battery station first. Let's just grab that and then we can grab the dam. Awesome. Now we've got a couple of spots that would be suitable for a, for a dam, but uh, at fears of disrupting the flow and the water level of the river too much uh, near our uh, port areas, 
I'm gonna move down here uh, to the very southern tip of the city. We've got an area here where we've got very, very strong currents coming through. In fact, if we bring up electricity and click the hydroelectric power plant, uh, we just see a ton of current here. So I'm gonna try and, and create the dam here. It's uh, a pretty wide spot and it should uh, help us produce quite a bit of electricity. Now the dam is quite expensive up front, uh, but the upkeep uh, is um, is really compensated by the uh, the income we can get from exporting. At least when you have strong currents like we do. And now we just need to connect up the uh, dam to the rest of the power grid. So I'm going to use the power lines that are necessary to connect these big ones and we're gonna go for a minus 20 in elevation and just connect up the two power outputs here and then we'll just let the power follow alongside or rather below of course this highway until we reach the uh, power lines that cut through the region out here. Now that we've connected it all up, I'm gonna hit play and our uh, budget situation here should change pretty drastically. At least I, I hope so, <laughs> this is gonna be sort of awkward. We can see that we've, uh, we're starting to rack up some export fees, which is great. It should improve more than this. And there you go. We are no longer importing any electricity because the dam can provide for the region. Uh, and it's got a ton of uh, export capacity as well. So we really turned the situation around. And if we check our electricity stats, we're now producing around 130. It's gonna settle because uh, the water levels are gonna settle a little more evenly here, uh, but it's much more than we consume and we're now able to export quite a bit. Very nice. Oh, I just love the way construction looks and feels in this game. It feels kind of substantial really. <laughs> anyway, with our cash situation now vastly improved, uh, there's one more thing I want to do before we start upgrading some of the services and infrastructure necessary to really bump up the happiness of the city. Uh, and that is, I want to meet some of this low density residential demand because this is quite a bit. So I might as well just uh, like lay out some more road infrastructure, zone it all up and then we can let that grow while we try to improve the situation with our services. We've got empty plots of land here on this island here uh, on the north side. Uh, and I think we're also gonna move a bridge across here and start mapping out some of this area. I think up here, I wanna have another like small industrial port. Uh, so I'm gonna reserve that. Um, but this should, uh, this is gonna be, I'm gonna be sprawl baby. So uh, let's get going with that. Now, right as I'm building this uh, suburban expansion in the northwestern part of town, I see a passenger train uh, moving through and I can't help but feel that we should actually add a passenger train station, like a commuter train station out here. 
node might not be the most realistic thing and i'm certain that it's gonna be uh, not profitable at all and won't see a lot of usage but i mean it's trains right trains are cool and we love trains so i think i'm gonna implement a passenger train station out here i'm gonna add a few commercial establishments alongside uh, bedford street here and then we're gonna zone uh, residential for the the remainder of the areas and we'll probably have to expand uh, the suburb up here as well because we've just got insane low density residential demand uh, and I'm starting to have issues with rent throughout the city as you guys can see um, we've got issues with high rent uh, which probably is due to the fact that the, the housing supply is just it's not it's not adequate so I'll be implementing the train station and we'll uh, continue expanding up here with the uh, suburban developments so i think to implement the train station i'm gonna just have to remove uh, this stretch of uh, of railway here and then we're going to jump into our train menu we'll grab the train station and i'm gonna try and align it a bit we can go down here and remove snapping and that's gonna enable us to very very freely place uh, the station and just place it down like so of course this means that the train station is a little oddly angled uh, for our main street here but i don't think it's a big problem i am hopeful that it's not so bad that we can't just add like a small road here out front Now, since we've only got a, uh, you know, one passenger train station asset in the base game, I am going to jump into downtown and just upgrade Riverview Central Station. Uh, we'll add the extra platforms like so. And I'm also going to add station services, which includes like a, we get like a grocery store and stuff here. Uh, and it's not a good financial decision. It's uh, merely for aesthetic purposes. I want this uh, central station to look like a central station because I think that the commuter train station we added out here will add something similar when we start expanding out here and then hopefully when we unlock our uh, high density office zoning and we start putting in more office jobs into downtown we'll see more commuters take the train but yeah we'll see with this in place it's time to create a really simple train line connecting uh, out here and then into downtown and look how cool this view looks where we've got the, the highlights of the railways. We can see like our industrial section here. I think it looks really nice. And we will add it to this platform, I think. And then we just have to go back and connect it up. We'll just have a look. We've got a single vehicle, which is probably more than, more than enough. So we'll just let that get going uh, while we start zoning out this area and uh, expand it to actually bring in the, the population we need. And we're actually going to have to place a school as our very first move here because, uh, yeah, I'm above capacity <laughs> in our elementary school system and I'm going to zone a bunch of extra housing out here. So we're going to have to do something. And I guess it's because we've only got two so far. We've got Victoria Peak Elementary School here in Victoria Peak. And then we've got Orchard Peak Elementary School here in Orchard Peak. So I'll need to add a third school out here as uh, my first course of action and then start zoning.
we've got our first train leaving for downtown. Pretty cool. All right, so I've decided to name uh, the suburb here Caldwell, and this is North Caldwell. Uh, I've also named this Caldwell Station, and the line we've got going here, uh, let's see if I can click on it, please. I've named it uh, Riverview Transit Authority River Line, because it's, for now it only connects Caldwell to uh, downtown Riverview, but in the future it's gonna connect multiple suburbs. All right, so let's actually start fixing some of the issues that we talked about in the very beginning. The first one I'm going to tackle is the unreliable mail service. And there's a pretty good reason for that. If we jump into communications, uh, we haven't even placed a post office yet. So you're not even able to like send or receive uh, physical letters throughout the city, which is, I guess, kind of bad. So the first thing we're going to do is just place this somewhere where it makes sense. Plop. There you go. With that placed, we have to place mailboxes throughout. Boxes are used by citizens to send out mail. So uh, post vehicles are gonna pick up mail from these and I'm just gonna place a bunch uh, throughout the city. They are very, very cheap and they don't cost anything in upkeep. So let's see, we'll place uh, quite a few alongside Main Street. We've got Sycamore Street here, which is also a pretty major road. And of course, we've got Sunnyside Avenue, which cuts all the way through downtown. And last but not least, we've got Fawn Street, which is also a major thoroughfare full of shops and row houses. And then maybe I should just dot a few uh, into some of the, the residential neighborhoods we have. And that should hopefully have us covered. So that should be the first of our issues fixed. And we can see all the post office trucks embarking to collect mail. So it's gonna take a bit before our postal service really gets up and running. And for that to take effect, let's see. The next one on the chopping block is high crime, which detracts by three points. <laughs> So let's go check up some info views. We'll select police and it's easy to see what the problem is, right? We've got our central police station here in like it's on the outskirts of downtown actually. And it's having issues covering the north and northwestern suburbs. And we can actually see that there's quite a bit of police presence out here uh, struggling to deal with the, uh, the crime levels out here. So this could be a two-step approach. We can grab our police station here and move it a bit closer to downtown, but while also placing a police station somewhere on the north side. Now, since I actually do enjoy the placement of this particular police station, and we could see it actually covering downtown, which is our biggest population center, I want to place an additional station somewhere on the north side or northwest side of the city. Uh, we could go for Caldwell, like the outskirts of Caldwell, somewhere around here, uh, where Northside and Caldwell meets. That is probably going to be sufficient with coverage. Uh, but we have to be careful because right now, uh, Palmer Heights and the port only has parts like coverage. Uh, and in Butler, Northside and Caldwell, we're going to see increased crimes because the services are stretched so thin, which is actually pretty realistic in like a North American context. The massive sprawl of this city, despite not even having 13,000 population yet, is really stretching out the service coverage very, very thin. Their existing police vehicles have to cover a very large area. So let's just place a, uh, we'll place a police station in Caldwell and see if that's gonna, gonna help fix some things. And I'm gonna go for like the, somewhere here on like the southern skirts of Caldwell because that should make for easy connection to uh, Butler and Palmer Heights and Cedar Brook. And I'm also hopeful that our existing police uh, station here doesn't have to send patrols uh, up in the northern suburbs when we add a new station. And I think I'm going to make like a small a dedicated road for our new police station here in Caldwell. So I'm just going to. Place it here. Let's see how that looks like that. It's got six vehicles, uh, but I think for a real 
game changer we are gonna have to do the garage extension to get 12 then we have 24 patrol cars throughout the city which i hope is uh, is gonna be sufficient i think we're gonna add just uh see if we can add a bit of parking here make it look a bit more realistic uh let's see something like this oh yes maybe a small park as well why not there you go and i'm just gonna do a tiny bit of decoration as well and if we check our info panel again we immediately see that coverage has much improved we've got some parts of north side where it still takes quite a bit for a patrol car to reach and the same with our industrial district out here on race ground but i think for now this is a much better situation and it's going to be interesting to follow up a little later on the average crime probability. It's currently 28%, uh, 250 criminals, 63 crimes per month with a uh, 33% uh, 33 crime success rate. So let's hope that's going to drop. We immediately see a ton of police cars dispatching here from the Caldwell police station. Very cool. Next up is uh, trying to fix our issue with unreliable healthcare coverage, which is uh, also very important. <laughs> Something I've actually uh, had to do is I've upgraded our, um, what's it called, our post office, because uh, some of these high rises in particular, as you guys can see, mail accumul accumulation is just insane. They pretty much consist of physical letters and not people by, by this point. So I've uh, massively upgraded the post office with uh, an additional uh, storage extension uh, as well as a post van garage and they are, they are just piling out. So I guess it's going to take a while for this to actually be fixed and I should have done this early on. So uh, yeah, learn, learn from my mistakes. So looking at our healthcare coverage, we've got two regular medical clinics, none of them with any upgrades. Uh, and the placement was all right before we started really expanding the city to the north. So I think uh, to provide better coverage for downtown, it's probably going to be sufficient to just upgrade this medical clinic and then taking this medical clinic and probably just relocating it somewhere here on the on the north side so let's just see the current placement uh, i'm actually quite happy with this but i guess i should maybe move it so this one actually does have an upgrade it's got an extension wing uh, enabling more patients here uh, let's see if we can just relocate it maybe somewhere up here uh, right here right across the port so we're gonna start out with that and we'll see if that has a positive effect then we'll check our other clinic here and i don't need do i need space for more patients actually i think i need both up upgrades because by adding the depot um i'm probably gonna be able to easily cover downtown and then i'll also need to add the extension wing I think the question is whether I actually also need to move this one a little closer to downtown. Maybe right here, actually. Yeah, and the extension wing. Can we add that as well? I don't even know if this is going to work. <laughs> uh, I'm going to place it here. Hopefully this stuff can regrow. We'll see. I hope this is going to help a bit with coverage. It should help with downtown at least, which was the major problem before. But of course, it kind of just moved the issue to the southern part of the of the city. So we may actually need to also add an additional new uh, medical clinic down here by Victoria Heights because we are also gonna expand across these rivers in this episode. So I'll, I'm just gonna do that up front, and there's pretty pretty good space here as well, so shouldn't be a big problem. I'll just place it right there. I'm not going to do any upgrades or, or anything like that to it um, because I think I think it's going to be sufficient for now. I also gotta I gotta watch my profit because I'm really eating into my monthly balance currently. 
And of course, I'm hopeful that we'll be able to see an increase in our average health because it's 54% right now, which I guess is pretty terrible. Um, we're seeing lots of ambulance activity at least throughout, and it's pretty obvious to me that the coverage is now much better. We've still got a bit of a blind spot out here in uh, in North Caldwell, uh, so um, we'll see if we have to handle that. One thing is for sure, we've made things much better throughout Riverview through these initiatives and we've actually got uh, a city that is now happy instead of content, at least on average, which is really nice. Still, we have a few crime issues. Let's just check our uh, statistics here to see if we've seen uh, an improvement. We really haven't. The crime, well, there are fewer crimes each month, but the success rate of the crimes is a bit higher. Hmm, why is that? Is that because there are more smart criminals left and we caught all the dumb ones? Average crime probability is also down, so I think things are improving, but uh, certainly not perfect yet. Now we are very, very close to unlocking the Great Town milestone, which is gonna be cool because it's gonna allow us to build some high density businesses. Uh, department stores, theaters, concert halls, movie theaters, yada, yada, yada. It's gonna be pretty cool. To get there, we are just gonna expand the city with more suburban development. We've got a ruthless demand for low density residential uh, so yeah people really want the american dream their own house with their own backyard and we're gonna give it to them we're gonna sprawl the city like mad stretch our services even thinner until the city becomes financially insolvent it's kind of dark let's build some more housing to give us plenty of room, we are gonna buy some more tiles. I've got 22 I can purchase because I haven't, I haven't bought something for the longest time. So let's just grab a bunch of stuff. We don't have to be super careful because we've got so much we can buy. So let's just grab these 19 at a hefty sum of 850k, like so. This gives us a little more room. So uh, let's expand. Let's expand across the river here. I think that would be pretty cool. We'll need, we've already got some connections, but we are probably gonna need a bridge uh, somewhere down here. So the southern part of Autumn Mills, we're gonna, I wanna go with a bridge through here. It kind of crosses and then we can start sprawling.
So I've drawn out a pretty massive new area here to the east of the, the river, uh, southeastern. It's going to be the southeastern part of Riverview, basically. And I can't help but feel it would be pretty cool to drag out our tram network out here. Currently, it terminates here on uh, Main Street, right at the Riverview High School, uh, quite a bit uh, of a distance from downtown. So would be cool to drag it across the Wood Street Bridge here, or what's it called? Blackwell Bridge, okay. Uh, and then have it terminate out here on Summit Street, which is like the, the main avenue of this new area. So I think, I think we're gonna try and do this. Let's see, <laughs> see how that works out. Now we've actually unlocked the Great Town milestone and uh, the high density business uh, zoning options and I've zoned a bit of that here just to see how it actually looks. Uh, due to no imagination I kind of just made this like a, a city on its own basically and called it East Riverview. I might revamp that. But as we allow this to grow I'm going to upzone a bit of stuff downtown as well with our new um, high density business option here so that we can get a good look at how this stuff actually looks so let's just see we'll go ahead and, and up zone some of these corner lots here and some of the narrow ones as well and i'm gonna try and not zone the exact same uh, size everywhere because then of course we're gonna see building duplication and that's not really what we want so um gonna try and and get some variety in here by mixing it up but it's gonna be interesting to see how these buildings actually look uh, when they start growing for now of course just need to start zoning them a bit i think that's sufficient gonna add about five or six of these to downtown uh, i also gotta connect the uh, tram line up here so that we can actually get out here on summit street and start serving east riverview uh, which I think is also going to be at the place where we build our college. If we go in here into development, uh, yeah, probably I need to unlock it at first. And it's about time because I don't have any education facilities post uh, high school. So I am quite behind here. So I'm going to unlock the college and we'll probably build it in this forest here in, uh, in East Riverview. Uh, first up though, just gonna connect the tram line, uh, creating some stops here so that you can easily access uh, East Riverview. I'm just gonna create a stop on each side of the road here. I think one stop is probably, we can add a stop here as well uh, to this loop here. And I know, know the loop technically isn't necessary. The trams, I think the trams are reversible, but uh, I just always had it. Okay, let's see. We've got a stop here as well. And I think we'll need to add a stop to the other side of the road also. Like so. And then we are of course just gonna expand the existing blue line here. So we'll drag it out to add another stop. We'll add a stop here, very cool. We'll add one here and we'll add one in here. And then we can see trams go out here, which uh, should be pretty nice. While East Riverview is starting to fill in quite nicely, let's uh, start building our college. So just 
I want it to face the water and have a really nice location, pretty deep within this forest, preferably. So let's see if we can do something like this. And then I'm probably gonna add upgrades to it just for aesthetic purposes, really. Or actually it's it's very expensive, so I I need to be pretty careful here what I spent my money on at least. But I think I am going to add this building because it looks super cool, which is a terrible reason. But uh, yeah, just gonna pause the game while we wait. Maybe adding an additional building here as well. Uh, how much extra upkeep? 50,000, I think. Yeah, no more, no more. I need to add a uh, elementary school as well, though, because we're gonna need one out here to serve this community. And I think it would be pretty cool to actually add it in the same area so that it almost looks like it's part of this like education complex out here. So I'm just gonna add that there and we'll add like, we'll add one of these additional buildings as well, just to mix it up, something like that. I'm a huge fan of this ability we have to plop buildings wherever we want and then afterwards you can pretty easily connect them uh, with roads i really think that is fantastic and the roads will snap to the buildings uh just yeah just it makes it so easy so i'm very very happy with this you guys can see just how easy it is here i guess And I quite like how that has turned out. I am going to upgrade these roads with grass and trees because I don't want a ton of street side parking here. As such, and it's quite foresty and nice looking. Let's see, we, uh, okay, I think we've got all the supply stuff we need. We've got electricity, we've got everything. So yeah, everything's nice and covered. So um, awesome. Now it's gonna be very interesting to see how much enrollment we'll have because I am finding it really hard to get people to really commit to the, you know, high education. Uh, the high school's got like 103 students, which is not a lot, but we have increased the amount of students that attend elementary school uh, by a lot recently, so yeah, let's hope. Something very interesting is going on in Riverview. I think I'm battling a bit of a structural issue, really. So I'm seeing abandonment in my high density residential towers, which is a bit of a bummer because eventually they'll be automatically demolished and we'll lose a part of the skyline. But I think the reason is that for one, I've really just expanded the city a lot with, you know, additional housing stock, uh, low density housing stock. While at the same time, I don't have a lot of students in the city that would value uh, smaller homes like these because I've only just added the college. So I'm guessing it's a combination of that. And I guess the third thing that's really playing a role here is that if you remember from the previous episode the one of the reasons that you know one of the ways i incentivized these towers to be developed by developers was to you know provide uh, massive uh, tax cuts for residential so and I, I can't really continue with that i don't have or make enough money to heavily subsidize or lower taxes so uh, it's gonna be interesting to see how this plays out all right, so I think I've done a few changes that is helping the city turn around a bit. I've got a bit of healthy demand again also for office. Uh, so what I've basically done is 
I've uh, made sure to adjust taxation again, uh, lowering it uh, a bit across the board. At the same time, I have lowered my budget for some of my services, such as uh, roads uh, and, and other aspects, uh, lowered for water and sewage a bit. Just done a bit of just done a bit of changes here and there just to save a little more money. Um, and I've spent some of that money building the East Riverview Medical Center here in East Riverview, which uh, instantly uh, revitalized the uh, demand here in the, in this city. So, so that's great. We can see a host of new construction. I've also started adding in some low density uh, office uh, throughout East Riverview, which is also helping uh, a bit because it provides uh, highly paid jobs for skilled individuals. So overall, good changes. I would like to try and add a bit of student housing or what at least looks to be student housing here on campus. Uh, and to do that, I'm going to just utilize zoning, of course, because that's what I have available. I'll uh, go for the European style architecture and some medium density housing and then as long as I make sure I zone the same type I should be pretty good. So as an example of this if we start zoning 2x3 here and there we should actually see uh, some very interesting developments because they should all look alike and maybe uh, just maybe we can convince ourselves that it's student housing. And I think, uh, in actuality, it's probably going to mainly be occupied by students, so it's not completely wrong. And we're gonna go for some 2 by 2s down here. Let's see how that looks when it's all done. While that's building up and being developed, I want to add a dedicated bus line that goes straight from the heart of downtown all the way out to the community college. So I'm gonna just place a new line somewhere downtown. Let's see, bus line tool. Uh, we've got quite a few stops here, so I could add a new one here and yeah, we've got some stops here. So I'll create a new route here, which is going to also stop here and Let's see, we've got a stop out here as well, which uh, is at the high school. We'll probably grab that one as well. And then we'll need to add some stops out here. So we'll just create like a waypoint here in downtown. I'll add a stop afterwards and then I'll have to create a stop down here right in front of the university. So I'll add a waypoint. Uh, let's have a stop here uh, in between the student housing as well. There you go. Question is if we should serve other parts of East Riverview, we probably should. So I'll add a stop here as well and I'll go ahead and add a stop up here. And then I'll add one stop opposing this one. And we'll just bring this back. Adding a waypoint here and should have a stop here. Yes, and then we'll complete the line after the stop here. Or actually just complete it by clicking this. Gonna go ahead and add the bus shelter that we need. Both sides of the road here. We need some out here as well. Here we'll just add like a bus sign. A small one should be fine. Not a shelter. Here we'll add a shelter. For the university we'll be adding a shelter as well and we'll just add a regular bus sign here in the middle of our student housing complex. And let's see we'll call this RTA uh, downtown to college. I've selected the electric bus and it's going to spawn 10 vehicles. Don't know if that's too much but we'll see. Let's get over to our uh, bus depot and see them all spawn. Our student housing is uh, looking pretty cozy actually, so I think I'm just gonna create a bit more uh, out here. Just gonna make like a dedicated road for it this time around. And now I'm just gonna let the city play for a bit until we get rid of this awful weather.
Well, it seems my structural issues are uh, sort of gone now and demand is a little more healthy because something very tall is being built in downtown. It's a residential skyscraper, so I'm looking forward to seeing how that's going to look. It's definitely going to stand out at first due to its uh, height. Uh, but uh, with the unlock of high density office very soon, then hopefully we can uh, give this uh, give this uh, building a few buddies down the road. Something I've also experimented. Oh, I'm just gonna show you guys the student housing. Uh, this turned out pretty cool as well. I feel very walkable distance to uh, to college. Uh, so I'm pretty happy with how this turned out. And inspired by that, I have tried to make uh, what is basically a public housing project. Uh, so the way I did this was just to ensure that I zoned the exact same size throughout and I think I'm going to just grab all of this and showcase how I did it and yeah add a bit more so basically I think I'll just for good measure I'll make sure to add like a parking lot as well let's see we'll just add this one and then uh let's see how many we can fit but basically i went for north american medium density and then i'm just zoning you can kind of see how deep i'm zoning here if i remove this i should be able to add uh, another one right next to it uh, it's gonna be built instantly i can add a, another one and the same thing uh, so that's a very easy way of of kind of enforcing that you get the very same building spawned again and again to create like a uniform uh, housing project look basically and I'll just uh, add a few paths here just to make it seem like one big development because that's of course kind of kind of the point with a uh, housing project like this and the parking lot is seeing some use so that's pretty nice uh, I'm going to add a few more of these housing projects throughout the city it's really gonna help uh, kind of curb some of the medium density residential demand we have because we've got quite a bit we are also slowly but surely progressing uh, towards the next milestone which is going to be a small city and this is where it gets really interesting because we'll unlock high density offices which are basically office skyscrapers and I've made sure not to settle or uh, kind of you know I've got a quite a bit of office demand currently but I, I don't really want to uh, provide the supply supply yet because I want to unlock this first and you may have noticed the uh, colors getting very very cold well we've just hit winter so I'm going to spend most of winter just expanding the city so that we can reach the next milestone and unlock high density offices and then we're gonna revamp downtown and continue from there on let's go Thank you. 
We've just unlocked small city, Milestone 10, which is awesome. It gives a bunch of policies, but most importantly, it allows us to zone for high density offices and create some nice skyscrapers. So we're going to get going with that. All right, so it's finally spring. We are at the very beginning of March. It's still freezing cold, but the colors look much nicer, if you ask me. Uh, so that's generally a criticism I have of the game. I think that the winter months are just a little too cold and oh, depressive uh, to look at. So yeah, I try to skip past those as quick as I can. Anyways, it's time for a full zoning uh, revamp of downtown. I already added some high density residential uh, zoning. Uh, so as you can see, we've got uh, some new cool um, residential skyscrapers that I'm quite quite happy with and we do have a pretty nice uh, downtown skyline by now but of course it's all gonna change when we start adding offices so I'm gonna follow uh, the same principles so to say that I uh, that I always do when I start zoning the stuff and that is that I avoid zoning the same lot size twice because I don't want two skyscrapers to look the same they are just too noticeable so I'm going to start zoning offices throughout, but I'm also going to up zone uh, some of the commercial stuff to high density commercial. I'm going to start up zoning some uh, row house stuff out here uh, alongside Fawn Street to medium density instead. Uh, and just generally increase the density of not just downtown, but also much of the inner city, because we also do have uh, lots of... Uh, higher developments out here alongside Fawn Street. So, Fawn Street sorry. so it's going to be a pretty big change. Uh, let's get going. And now the fun part is going to be hitting play and seeing all the cranes spawn and all this new development come flooding in. So lots of new row house and medium density out here, office blocks here, major offices here. And we've got some pretty tall cranes as well here in downtown. At least a couple of really tall ones. It's going to be interesting to see what we... What we have as the final look, I upzoned a bunch of stuff on Fawn Street, like I discussed. Uh, so we'll also see just an increased density out here. Also, I noticed some houses uh, in here, which is like the northern part of downtown, that are fully upgraded now, or level 5. They look really sweet. Look at these designs. One is uh, quite traditional, and these obviously have like a more... Uh, modernistic look uh, but yeah a very good location at least if you like the city life but you still want to have like a single family house this is this is kind of the closest you can get to downtown i guess you know, have some pretty sick views i'll get back to you guys when construction has finished and this is the final result so i've grabbed the uh, cinematic photo mode let's uh, let's take a little tour of downtown I am very happy with how this turned out. I uh, tried to mix the skyscrapers uh, to the best of my ability. We've got a few duplicates in here, but it's, it's not too bad. I hope it's also clear that I upped the density here alongside Fawn Street uh, quite a bit down the street here. Uh, and of course, alongside Sunnyside Avenue here, we've got some pretty cool shots of downtown, I feel. And we've got a lot of activity as well. And just... When I zoom in real close, you can see that this game is actually pretty good looking. I mean, what a handsome fella. <laughs> I'm a big fan of the uh, of the lights on the cars as well. We can see them break here. Waiting for the red. Turns, yeah, they actually start on yellow, so pretty realistic. And then they move on. We've got lots of trams going through here as well. So I'm just going to fly uh, around downtown a bit. Look at the scenery. Lots of public transport throughout. Got some benches here, seeing some use. Sky chilling. 
really chilling nice shoes man with uh, what four dogs three dogs okay yeah let's move on a bit we'll move out to main street out here which is uh, also quite busy and i just love how it looks with all these skyscrapers now and that actually concludes this third episode of riverview now there is a ton more which i would have loved to build but i was a bit tight on time and given that this is only episode three and we've just cracked the 20 population mark i guess there's a good chance of us continuing with this series uh, beyond the release of the game if you'd like to see Riverview continue as a series beyond early access, let me know in the comments down below. Uh, and if you got any questions to Sid Skylands 2, throw them into the comment section as well and I'll do my best to answer them. I must say I feel privileged and lucky to have gotten early access and this opportunity to create content with City Skylands 2. There are a few things that I would like changed and improved, but in general I really feel that they have improved immensely on base mechanics as well as the just the overall aesthetics of the game. And I also just can't help but see massive potential here. I mean if we recall how much City Skylines 1 has changed during its 8 year course, I mean how will City Skylines 2 look a year from now? And what about 5 years? Anyways, I'll leave you guys with a ton of cinematic shots throughout Riverview, which I hope you guys will enjoy. Um, I certainly have enjoyed creating them as well as just playing this game. So yeah, thank you so much everyone for watching and the immense support you've given me. It's been quite overwhelming recently. Uh, hope to see you all in the next one. Bye.